You have failed this city. Hello and welcome back to Indie Rebel, Hollywood Effects Without the Hollywood Budget. Today we begin part two of our Arrow training series. Uh, for those of you guys that watched the season and series finale last night, I'm sure you've been waiting if you watched part one of the series on how we're actually going to do these Arrow effects because now you're probably motivated to go out and do some for yourself. So that's what we're going to do today. So here we have uh, what we've already shot. And if you look... You know, we've got sound effects dropped in. We're going to talk about that in the next one, uh, which will also deal with our sponsor for the series, Vordio. But in this part, we're going to actually add in the CG arrows themselves. So if we look right now, you can see I'm just drawing with nothing. In fact, if we make this full screen here, you can see a little bit better. There is nothing in there. I'm reaching out behind me. I pull out nothing, lay it on the bow, and fire with nothing, right? We showed you how to do that in the last video. So now let's go ahead and export this uh, and we will start doing our VFX. The first thing we're gonna wanna do is get a nice still image here. And we're gonna need this for our camera tracking. Now you may be wondering, camera tracking, but we're you know locked off. How do you track a camera? Well, because we are on a tripod, we can actually use a free tool for Blender called FSpy to figure out our scene. So I'm just gonna come in here and jump over to the color page. I'm sure there's other ways to do it. This is just how I know how to do it. And I'm going to grab a random still here of the shot. That one looks nice. So we're going to grab a still. It appears over here in my stills gallery. And now I'm going to export it. And to make things really easy, we're just gonna throw this onto the desktop. And we're gonna call this arrow camera track. And we want to save this as a JPEG. Hit export. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and jump over to our web browsers and we're going to go to fspy. This is fspy.io and they've got a nice tutorial. You can download it right here. When you get it downloaded and installed, you'll be able to open it up. As you can see here, they talk about using this official fspy importer add-on. So you're going to want to make sure that you download that as well if you're following along and using Blender 2. The other thing that we're going to need to make this all work is we're going to need some arrows to work with, some digital arrows. And you can make your own or you can get lazy like me and just go to blendswap.com. And this is by Sign Guy. And I ended up using this particular arrow right here because I like the, the tips. It looks just like the ones from the show. These are field points. These are broadheads. In the show, he usually uses broadheads. A little fun fact, this is actually the same bow that I have too. I thought that was kind of cool. But go ahead and download uh, this model or you can find any other arrow models or make your own. And when you have all this stuff together, now we can jump over to Blender and uh, make sure that we import our FSpy add-on. So I'm going to go up to File, and or excuse me, Edit, Preferences, and go into your add-ons. And we will install the FSpy add-on. I've already installed mine. You can see it's right here, import fspy project. And so that'll be good to go here in a little bit. The other thing I wanna do while I'm here and I have my arrows open is I wanna make sure that I can find this arrow that I want later. So I'm gonna select it, come over here to your sync selection or collection, and there it is. And I'm just gonna go and rename this to arrow. Just normal arrow, that's it. Right up here to the top, it will make it real easy to find. Now we're gonna jump into fspy Okay, and it says drag, drop an image or project here. So I'm going to go to my desktop and drag my image onto it. There we go. And at first glance, this is kind of confusing, but this is super easy to do. Basically, we know that Blender is a Z up coordinate system and we have our X and our Y's and that's what we're gonna set. You could set Z's and stuff like that as well. But for this particular image, this will work really well with the next and a Y. So check this out. You grab your points, let's see, right here, and you find lines that you can work with. So I've got a nice strong line here. I've got a nice strong line up here. These are all on the same plane. So I can go ahead and use these to set my angle. So I'm going to do that. And actually, let's go and uncheck dim image. There we go. Wow, we can see that a lot better now. And... Actually, I might just use this one right here. So I'm dragging my X line 
my x-axis right there so you can see that matches up I know that these lines these timbers are the same uh, angle as these ones up here on the ceiling so I'm gonna do the same thing up here I'm gonna choose this one and drag it through the image over here like that making sure that stays nice and lined up so that takes care of my x-axis now I'm also gonna do my y so I can come in and uh, use these other lines right I've got this line right here and I've got these lines up here in the rafters so we're gonna do the same thing drag that down to there and to there and then we can do the same thing up here we're gonna take the rafter here and we can take the rafter here and what we've now done is we've motion tracked a tripod shot that's it that's all there's to this now we come up we go file and save we save the project I'm gonna throw this on my desktop again to make things easy we'll call this arrow track hit save and now I can go back into blender we will start a new project let's save this one first file new general and let's go ahead and go uh, file import fspy I'm gonna go back to my desktop there's my project hit import and now you can see something cool has happened it brought in a new camera zoom out so you can see that's down low looking up to the scene this is set up just perfectly for what we had I'm gonna delete the default camera we don't need that and uh, for now I'm gonna delete the default cube too we don't need that either so now we're all set to bring our arrow and start animating this. So I'm going to go uh, File, Append, and I'm gonna go find my uh, Bone Arrow project right here. And we're gonna go into Object, and the one that we renamed Arrow, I know that's the one I want. Because you can see they had a bunch of other objects in that scene, different things, and in order to keep track of which one I wanted, that's why we renamed it. So we'll append that from the library. All right, something I like to do to make my life a lot easier uh, is you can see that we have our origin or our anchor point, pivot point, right here in the middle of the arrow. So if I were to go to rotate this, it's rotating off axis. When you are actually firing a, a bow and arrow and you're, you're drawing it out of the quiver, you're grabbing it up here at the knock point. So an easy way that I found to, to make this work is I'm going to grab my arrow, line it up here with my origin cursor right there, We'll go to another view make sure it's still looking good as well bring it up yep that's looking good just drop it down a little bit and perfect just like that back to the top view that's all looking good I can now go uh, right click on it set origin origin to 3d cursor and now with where this is located you can see we're pivoting it around the knocking point and that's gonna make the animation of this a lot easier to do so we got that Let's go back to our camera view and let's go ahead and load in our footage right so I'm gonna select the camera go to the camera and we have this background image here I'm gonna delete the one that's already there I don't want that and instead I'm going to bring in the actual image for this here we go arrow to plate and just select it and I can see that this is gonna be 89 frames long starting on frame one so I'm gonna open the image and then we're going to come down here and say that this is an image sequence that is 89 frames long. And now, if we look at the screen, we can see that this is actually animated. We have our video clip here inside of Blender. Let's also go ahead and set our project to be 89 frames as well, so we don't accidentally uh, go past that at all, because that can be a real pain. I'm also going to increase the alpha of the transparency in the viewport just so I can see things a little bit better. Now the next thing we need to do is figure out the scale of the arrow, right? We need to scale up our 3D object to match. And so what we can do is go to this side profile where I've got a nice full draw and we're basically getting the complete side view of where the arrow would be. And this will make it easy to match our scale. Everything's just going to be relative at this point. So I can now take my arrow and I'm going to grab it and move it so the knocking point is right there in my fingertips where it should actually be. And now 
I'm going to rotate it along Z until it's at its largest because that would mean then that we're completely parallel to the camera. So somewhere right around there maybe. The other thing I want to do is I'm going to change this from my world coordinates to local coordinates. And that just means that all the rotation now is in relation to the arrow itself. And we can see there. I've got a nice straight line of this red going all the way down in line with this Z axis as well. That means the arrow is perfectly perpendicular. Now we can rotate it down to be more in line because remember it's going to go from my fingers all the way here across the riser and the shelf. So maybe bring it up like that. And then from here we just scale it to size. About like that. Let's go and scale down. So now I know that at frame 44 right here this arrow is just about the right size and everything's going to match up beautifully uh, as we go through and start tracking this into place. So I'm going to set a keyframe and we want to do a lock rot scale because we might be cheating a little bit with some scaling if we need to. It's the beauty about quick visual effects like this that are covered in motion blur. You get away with a lot. So this frame looks good. Now I'm just going to unselect my arrow and just kind of breeze through a little bit frame by frame. So it looks like I let go actually right at that frame. I'm right there and then I let go. And so I can now in my mind say, okay, how many frames until it goes off screen? I can might go, you know, five. Let's see how that looks. So I'm gonna go back to 44 and we'll go one, two, three, four, five. And then let's zoom out. And we'll now take our arrow and we will send that forward along that x-axis right there, just like that. And then once it's out of frame, I lock rot scale. We have that arrow there now, and let's just see what we've got. That's not bad. Yeah, I think that, that works out nice. The other thing I like to do too, and we'll do it at the end, is we're gonna make sure that our keyframes are linear and not gradual. So now we've got our first animation done. Now it's just a simple matter of backtracking this here for this this one arrow. So let's zoom back in again. Not to the timeline. Up here. And I'm just going to back this up a little bit. So I'm on frame 44. And let's start backing it up. So I'm going to arrow back. And it's just a matter, we can do like every five frames to start with, and then if we need to add more keyframes to it later, we can. So I'm gonna go back to frame 39, and then grab the, and adjust it. Bring it down to here. That looks good. Looks like it needs to be rotated up slightly. About like that. So I go I, lock rot scale. Let's go forward. Oh, see, that doesn't look good now. So here on frame 42, we're off a little bit especially down here on frame 41. So let's go ahead and zoom in. And we want to now bring it up and back. Just making sure that it's matched up here uh, between my, my correct fingers. And we're gonna add another keyframe for that. And it looks like right here, I came down slightly. So we can just bring it back up ever so slightly. And there's going to be a lot of motion blur on this. We're going to be able to get away with a whole lot here. And you can see there's a lot of motion blur in the shot too. So that's okay. And then we'll go down here to where I gripped it. Right about here. This is when I should be loading the arrow. So line it up. I'm lining it up now with the string in my fingers. And... Again, just kind of trying to keep my rotations looking proper. And you can see that actually looks pretty good. Let's watch this through. Not bad, not bad. There might be a little bit too much jitter on it, but I think when we get the motion blur on, we'll do just fine. Now the last bit of this arrow is we need to make sure that we can uh, rotate it around to come out of the quiver. 
So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to pan down so we can see. We'll go back to our last keyframe. And you can see my arm is just kind of pulling it out. So I want it to be about straight up in the air right here. So I'm going to grab it, stick it there, and we're going to rotate it to be almost straight with my arm at that point. Set a keyframe. And then we're going to go back to where I reach back and I grab it from the quiver. So now we're going to keep the rotation going, 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 all the way around. About like that. And grab it and load it in. Add a lock cross scale. So let's see what happens. So that's looking good, except now we're a little bit off right here. So I'm going to see the, the motion blur of my hand moving super quick. Drop this in. Start rotating it down. I lock cross scale. All right. Let's go and play this and see what we got. Nice. Cool. So that's working and looking pretty good at that point. So now what we do is we take our arrow and I say, okay, this one is going to be here from frame 27 up through frame 50. So I'm going to make a mental note and actually probably even come here and change my project to make this from frame 27 and then end on frame 50. And then I would go ahead and render this out with motion blur. Very, very important. You're going to light it and, and do all that kind of stuff too. We're not going to get into that. This is just the, the basic process, the overview here of how to do this. So drop that in, let it go. Good. Perfect. So I'm going to render that out. I'm going to end up with a series of images that go from frame 27 to 50. When you get that done, now we're ready to do the, the next arrow. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to come in here and go shift D to duplicate it, right? We're going to turn off the first arrow. We don't need to see that anymore. We don't need to mess with that anymore. And now we're just going to mess with our new one. We, we come in here, clear out our keyframes. And then we're back to square one, ready to start animating for the next shot. So I'm going to come up here. And at this point, because now I know the size of my arrow and everything's matched up right, I can literally come in and rotate it down and just start here from the beginning at this point. So let's start back here, add lock route scale. It's going to come up right about here. It should be fl flipped straight up. And now I'm going to use my Z axis instead of my Y axis because it's going to be coming towards the camera. So I'm going to rotate it up in a way like that and put it into my hand, set another keyframe. And if we back up here, we can see that that's already looking really, really good and then just continue it down through. So now it's going to be down here loading onto the bow itself. So I'm going to bring it down. Somewhere around here. Let's go and grab it, get it kind of lined up where it needs to be. Looks like we're a bit too far down, so we're going to actually bring it up slightly. About like that. And the other thing too is I shoot off the left side of the, the shelf, not the right side. Um, this is physically impossible to do in real life with the kind of speeds that I'm shooting. But for the sake of a movie or a TV show, it's going to be just fine. So we do that and then it would draw. And for the actual drawback, we could move it back in Z space if we wanted to, or excuse me, in a X space because we're lo looking at the X uh, local coordinate. So I'm just going to go ahead and line this back up here again. There's my fingers. Rotate it around. Come on, come on, come on. Over like that. And send that back in X, maybe to there. I lock out scale. And then there's a nice frame where I'm holding it. That would come from about there. There. Rotate that around to match the bow. And so it's, it's tedious. It's time consuming. This is just about as bad as doing lightsabers. But the overall effect is going to look really, really good when we're all done with it here. And you can see that, you know, just using this free software, free add-ons, we're able to do a whole lot to add these arrows into the shot. 
So I'm going to finish that. I would render out that section, and then I'd go back. I had the first arrow draw down at the beginning here too. We would do one for that. Once we have all three of our, our rendered shots out together, we can go into Natron and actually do our compositing. So let's hop over there and take a look at that. All right, now here we are inside of Natron. I'm going to bring in my original footage. All right, so we bring it in. The next thing I want to do is I want to fix my gamma correction here. My new favorite way to do that is not with a log to linear node like it used to be, but actually with just a simple gray node. And I can come in here now and screw with the gamma until I get that looking about right for me. And what's cool about this is that there's a reverse option that we'll use down at the end. We'll copy and paste the grade at the very end, hit reverse, and everything's going to go back to looking uh, nice and flat like that. So now let's go ahead and bring in our arrow itself. I'm going to go read and go find my shots. And as you can see, we have in here our uh, original arrows. Now these numbers are the ones I used from my original shot. These are not the ones we used in the tutorial, so they don't match up exactly but uh, it should still work. So we've got our first one right here. I've got a second one down here. And we've got a third one. Read it in right there. And at this point, because their start and end frames already match up, all I literally need to do is come in here and change the holds to blacks. And that's just going to make sure that um, we don't see it when we get these all layered on top of each other, and I'll show you what I mean. So I'm down here at frame one, but if I merge in the second one at this point, so if I back over here to frame one, and we merge in the second one and zoom in, you can see that the arrow is already here. And so if I come in now and I just change this to black before, that goes away. That means that the arrow will only be on screen when we're in the designated frame range form. So I'm going to do that to each one of these. Black, black, do the last one here, make that black, and that black. And we'll just drop all these in real quick, just with some basic merge nodes. Use M to do that. You could do this in Fusion as well, absolutely. I just prefer Natron's layout. Well, technically I prefer Nuke's layout, but uh, Natron is the best free option that we've got for this. So. Let's go ahead and fill the frame and take a look at what we've got. All right, that all looks really good actually. Nice speed shooting. One, two, three. At this point, all we gotta do is just come in and match up the black levels. Now, one other thing that we could do to make things a lot easier because these arrows are all the same, they're all relatively in the same shot, I don't wanna have to color correct this all at you know diff three different color corrections. I would rather, if I can, get away with doing it all at once. And here's how I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna add in a constant, which essentially will be invisible, and we will merge that up into it. And just reline these back up again here. Like that like that. Bring this merge up, and that read node up. Let's push this off to the side, throw these into a backdrop, and we'll call this backdrop arrows. We'll make the font ridiculously big, and because this is for the green arrow, we will make it a shade of green, just like that. And now I can merge this stack, this pre-comp if you will, if you're coming from After Effects, into the actual shot. And again, you'll see that nothing has changed. It's all going to be exactly the same at this point. But the advantage now that I have is that I can come in and find my, let's call it my hero frame right here that I want to work on. And now I can do one set of color correction and grading without uh, having to do it to everything. So I might come in and start with my black points. Try to match it up a little bit more. These values are really, really tricky. That's actually not too bad. I think we just nailed it. <laughs> cool. So we'll leave that down. And I just like kind of cleaning things up a little bit like that. And let's go ahead and make this full screen. Fill it. And take a look at what we've got. Go back to frame one. Now, if I wanted to be truly accurate, I would also want to come through and roto out 
uh, my hand, I would want to roto out the bow because right now it's obviously on the wrong side of the bow. But for how quick this goes by, watch, we're going to watch this in real time here in just a second once it loops back through. This goes by so quick that nobody's going to notice. And you can see now I look like a superhero. I look like I'm firing green arrows like the green arrow actually does. The only thing that is wrong with these, of course, is that the arrows don't completely match the arrows in my quiver. But uh, we could go through and retexture and remodel them if I really wanted to spend the time into it and uh, really match everything up perfectly. But for the sake of this, I think we're going to call that good. All right, once we've got our VFX rendered out, we jump back here into Resolve or Avid or wherever you're, you happen to be using, and we can uh, go ahead and apply our color grade. We'll mute the sound right now because that will be in our next video. And so if, uh, you can come in here and apply your color grades to it. In this case, uh, this is what I came up with. Kind of a nice green look, definitely shifted the shadows towards green. We can take a look at that here too, see uh, what the node setup for that looks like. So you can see I had some keying that I was doing. I had an initial color correction here. I did a, a skin qualifier, giving me kind of my skin tones and anything else that was in the skin tone range. Then I inverted it with an outside node, and that's where I tinted all my shadows towards green. And then I did a couple other levels corrections and such, and uh, some noise re removal as well. I had some flickering lights and things that were going on. And that gives you your final result. Now, the one thing I didn't like about this grade is this down here when I was color correcting my skin also turned super super orange and I could have power windowed it but because we were working with a locked off tripod I literally just uh, went into Photoshop with a still frame created an overlay that I then darkened and just laid on top so if I shut off these videos you can see that's all we're left with right there is just the uh, the wood and it gets added in and looks overall really quite nice and you've got something that you can hopefully uh, be proud of at the end of it here. So that is the part two of our Arrow tutorial series, taking a look at now the visual effects side and the color grading and such. In part three, like I said, we're gonna take a look at the audio because audio is really what's gonna sell this and make this thing happen. And again, this is sponsored by Vordeo and we're gonna be taking a look at how they can help make your independent filmmaking that much easier and really uh, be a, a true asset to your workflow. So thanks for watching. I'm L Director. This has been Indie Rebel Hollywood Effects without the Hollywood budget. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. We'll see you next time.